So I think when you first get a new young person, ideally, absolutely like perfect world situation, you would be having a transfer meeting with the old caseworker. So the old caseworker can say, oh, so this is Billy. Uh, Billy is going to school. How are you going to school, by the way? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. Good. Yeah, which subjects are you taking again? Oh, just uh, drama, music, art, free unit English. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, so you do like lots of creative stuff. Billy's actually really creative um, and she's been doing this art course and she's been doing all of these beautiful drawings. Actually, do you still have some of those on your phone that you were showing before? Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, hold on. And, you know, but because of the old caseworker being there, the old caseworker can really introduce the young person in a really favorable light. And that gets you off to a great start with this new caseworker who's otherwise just going to be sitting there in your first case meeting going, okay, so you're in year 10. Um, how is all of your legal issues going and your drug and alcohol issues? And then they kind of revert back to the paper really quickly. So ideally you'd have a handover meeting. That would be great. It's not always possible because there's so much changeover. But I would implore all caseworkers that have a new young person not to look in the case file notes before they've actually met the young person. The case file notes, <laughs> I'll talk more about case file notes a bit later, but they're just horrendous. They're a big, it's like a big book of every foot you've ever put wrong. And it's just a huge book of just the worst person that you've ever met is in this book and it doesn't there's no obligation to mark down the achievements and successes any certificates you've earned any good grades you've got um, any kind things that you've done for other young people in the refuge or kind things that you've done for people in the community volunteer work none of that is recorded it's all stealing lying cheating on exams every problem that you've ever had as a teenager is recorded here and also the worst moments of your life are are noted in in excruciatingly fine detail and that is not the way that you want to meet a young person the way that you want to meet a young person is before you look at those notes go and have a chat with them preferably somewhere that's familiar but that is not owned by the organization that you're in so best not to do it at their house that is owned by your organization or even at their foster care place or wherever uh, a park nearby is always really great um, anywhere that's sort of nearby and familiar to them that's their territory and not your territory would be great and then just sit and have a really friendly chat over a milkshake or something just sit and chat about that person sort of like week month how they're going chat to them as though you're having coffee with a friend and you don't need to go into any kind of detail with your own personal life so there's no like crossing professional boundaries in that way to have that informal casual friendly chat is going to give you so much information about that young person that you're already kind of going to know what they're like before you read these case file notes. And then maybe you skim through the case file notes to kind of get an idea of what their traumatic background is or what their, uh, you know, what kind of um, medications they're on and what health issues they have and all that kind of thing. You might want to uh, skim through for those um, important details, but never take case file notes seriously because I've had case workers definitely that have read my file back to front before they've met me. And I can always tell because they're bracing themselves for a brat. They are bracing themselves for this absolutely horrifically nasty, uh, lying, dishonest person that is in these file notes, which is just not who I am at all.